Welcome, welcome everybody to the official launch of the FAO eLearning Academy. Uh, I'll start by introducing myself. I'm Christina Petraki and I head the FAO eLearning Academy. Today we have a, a very dynamic and interesting agenda for all of you. So we, um, we have the pleasure and the honor to have with us uh, first for the opening remarks, the Deputy Director General of FAO, uh, Mrs. Beth Betchdahl. Uh, then we will have the uh, introductory remarks of uh, Mrs. Uh, Villarreal, Marcela Villarreal, who is the director of the Partnerships Division. Uh, I will then uh, prepare, uh, uh, deliver a brief uh, presentation on the FAO eLearning Academy, the pedagogical models, the, the innovative learning solutions that we are proposing. And then I would like to give the floor to our partners uh, for, for them to share with us their testimonials and their experiences in working with us on how, what impact they have managed to reach thanks to the FAO eLearning Academy courses. So uh, the idea is really to give the floor to our partners uh, to hear from them what has been their experience. The, the, I, will, I will then try to answer a few of the questions that you will be uh, asking us during the, uh, the, the event. And uh, Mrs. Donjin Feng, who is the head of the Capacity Development uh, and Academia Unit of FAO, will be uh, delivering the concluding remarks. So without further ado, I would like to give the floor to uh, Mrs. Bet Betchdahl, the Deputy Director of FAO. Mrs. Betchdahl, the floor is yours. You have five to ten minutes. Okay. Thank you so much, Christina, and to everybody who has been a part of this very incredible effort and initiative. And I want to congratulate you and so many of our colleagues for what is a very special occasion today. So welcome, everyone, to the official launch of the FAO Multilingual eLearning Academy. I'd like to welcome the speakers also from FAO and our partner institutions, the European Union, UNIMED, Future Food Institute, and Danone that will be sharing with us more about their experiences as you've heard. As you are all aware, capacity development is at the heart of FAO's mandate, our strategic framework, and our interventions worldwide. Our members lead and manage their own development processes, while FAO supports them in this endeavor by strengthening their capacities to achieve their goals in food security, nutrition, and sustainable agriculture development, all with an eye towards the implementation of the Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development. One of FAO's current and most pressing priorities is to support members to anticipate and mitigate the COVID-19 pandemic's impacts on sustainability and on food security and protecting livelihoods. This makes the launch of the FAO Multilingual eLearning Academy that seeks to promote universal transfer of competencies through innovative learning solutions and pedagogical models more relevant today than ever. Today, together, we are launching the eLearning Academy that is now available in the six UN official languages in English, French, Chinese, Arabic, Spanish, and Russian to ensure worldwide participation and engagement. The eLearning Academy supports members through capacity development interventions and over 350 multilingual e-learning courses offered free of charge as a global public good. We are also extremely pleased to announce that for the first time ever in its history, FAO has an academy that is the official certifying body of FAO through the digital badges certification system that enables the progression of talents within organization and also increases employment opportunities. This is already an achievement on its own. Sustainability is one of the world's greatest goals and really the only way forward for all of us. For this purpose, we will need competent professionals, able and capable to take the appropriate decisions to formulate targeted and sustainable policies and strategies, to think creatively, and to adopt innovative green methodologies and technologies. In other words, we can only achieve sustainability through the development of capacities 
and the transfer of skills and competencies. In this regard, the FAO eLearning Academy is a true pride for our organization and a trendsetter worldwide in instructional design and innovative educational models that ultimately aim to support members and enable them to face the global challenges all of humanity is facing. The eLearning Academy is the result of a collaborative effort. It wasn't done and put together just by colleagues here at FAO. There is clear joint success today that needs to be celebrated. Many partners have contributed actively and also benefited from the wealth of FAO e-learning courses. Other UN agencies that have participated and been supported throughout include UNHCR, UNITAR, UNDP. Also, we have collaborated closely with our colleagues at WFP, EFAD, ITC ILO. We've also collaborated with the European Union, the International Federation of the Red Cross, various NGOs, CSOs, as well as regional development agencies such as ECOWAS, SILS, COMESA, NAPAD, and ASEAN. All are adopting the FAO eLearning Academy approaches, quality criteria, and the instructive models that are a part of it and they are integrating the e-learning courses as part of their own capacity development efforts worldwide. I am so very pleased to be able to participate in this launch and to learn more as I take on my new role here at FAO about the e-learning academy and all of the benefits that it provides to people all over the world. Christina and colleagues, I thank you and your colleagues for your contributions, your hard work, your participation, and the support that you have been able to generate. I am certain that with all of this activity, all of the success, and all of this coming together, even here today on this very Zoom call, that we can make the FAO eLearning Academy an even greater success worldwide in the future. Now I'd like to give the floor to Marcella Villarreal, Director of our Partnerships Division, who will share more about the role of the Academy in the implementation of our strategic framework and the SDG Agenda 2030. Marcella, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Beth. And I just, I'd like to join your warm, uh, uh, welcoming uh, remarks uh, for this very, indeed, very, very important initiative. Uh, which is uh, out there now, so from today, for the whole world to benefit from. And indeed, I think it's a very, very important contribution. It's a global public good, and it's an important contribution to develop capacities worldwide. Six languages, all of our UN official uh, languages, and some of the courses uh, have actually been translating into a couple of other non-official languages too. Um, we um, are living, as Beth said, this is, we're living in unprecedented times. I think the COVID uh, pandemic has made us think a little bit in different ways of what really is important and what really matters. And uh, we believe in the power of capacity development for building resilience. And resilience is what is needed uh, in a world that is hit so badly by a pandemic as we're seeing today. Um, and we also see, and especially as we are in seclusion, some of us are still in, in lockdown, we're not going out. Um, but I think that uh, we um, appreciate even more the power of collaboration, the power of working together, the power of coming together and find mutual grounds and find solutions and contribute them to the world. And this is indeed what we're doing uh, right now with the Academy, with capacity development, uh, reinforcement in all of our member countries, bringing together the different parties, partners, and indeed, um, this um, uh, initiative has the power of the thinking and the contribution of over 200 partners throughout the world. And there are partners of different kinds. They include, of course, the governments, our main partners as a, as a UN organization, uh, but also we've brought together uh, the non-state actors, including uh, private sector, including civil society, including farmers' organizations, um, intergovernmental and regional organizations. Many UN agencies have also participated in this effort. And here you see 
how by coming together, by understanding their specific needs, by tailoring each one of these courses, and we have more than 350 of them available free of charge, uh, but listening to all of our different, uh, the needs of our different constituents, we are able to produce these courses that go directly to uh, respond to a very specific capacity development need. Uh, so um, I joined Beth in feeling the pride uh, today and I'd like to also um, congratulate all of the team who's working very, very hard and reaching out to all of you, to all of our partners, to all of our people in different parts of the world. Uh, because indeed this is a very important accomplishment and it comes at a very important moment uh, when many of us are still in lockdown and hopefully we can um, nudge people to use the lockdown opportunity, which is ongoing in many countries, to make even more use of these uh, e-learning uh, resources, which they can do uh, within the warmth uh, and the protection of their, of their own homes. So um, for us, uh, of course, I'm the director of the partnerships division, and so I really believe in partnerships. Uh, partnerships uh, are achieved by coming together, by listening to each other, and by sharing, sharing innovations, sharing design. Um, in this particular case, development and delivery of competency-based capacity development interventions. Um, in uh, the overall objective of uh, our academy that we're happily and pr proudly la launching today uh, is to strengthen human capital. And this is done through the transfer, through exchange of knowledge, skills, competencies, uh, and our objective is to generate competent professionals uh, who are able, not only through their knowledge, but also through their skills, uh, to be able to come up with innovative responses to challenges, even to global challenges, uh, like the one that we are living right now as we speak. The FAO eLearning Academy promotes sustainability, human rights, and inclusiveness, and it ensures that uh, the new and the hopefully valuable competences that it helps uh, to promote are embedded in local institutions uh, and that they're tailored to country specific needs. Uh, they, all of these courses come after a very long process of listening to specific needs and the needs come from the country level, the local level. So these are res direct responses. So they listen, they respond to country specific needs while enabling and empowering our FAO members to be better equipped uh, to uh, be able to go ahead in terms of uh, looking in new ways at the global challenges that we are uh, confronted. As Beth was saying, uh, this is a massive exercise. Uh, today, uh, we're happy to say that we have more than 600,000 users around the world. Uh, they, all of the courses are developed together with all of the different FAO technical divisions. Uh, they cut across all of our strategic programs and they cover a number of thematic areas, including biodiversity, climate smart agriculture, sustainable food systems and nutrition, food safety, food losses and waste, child labor, responsible govern, governance uh, to land tenure, and many, many, many others. And therefore, they're fully aligned with Agenda uh, 2030. They provide a learning opportunity under all of the different areas of FAO's mandate. Um, we have, uh, as I said before, this is a joint effort. This is a joint effort with universities, academic and research uh, institutions, uh, with a number of the different partners that Beth already mentioned, and to whom we're very, very grateful. Uh, some of our partners have been very generous in uh, ensuring that this uh, initiative has the funding necessary, and all of our other also partners have been very generous in uh, also sharing uh, their learning needs uh, and their knowledge and their methodologies and their issues so that this joint effort is going to have a really important impact. Uh, the FAO eLearning Academy has also created, together with universities and academic work networks, a number of university masters and postgraduate degree programs based on the eLearning courses. 
So this is why today, as we speak, we are able to influence the learning of students around the world through these programs in terms of food security, in terms of uh, good nutrition, and many other um, areas of FAO's mandate. So the FAO eLearning Academy is the official certifying body of FAO, and it is adopting, as Beth said, the digital badges certification system, which we believe is a very important and necessary innovation uh, for the impact of this academy. And we're also sure that is, this is going to help uh, people to progress talents within the organization, but also to increase their employment opportunities. And we know that especially now with the massive unemployment that we're seeing, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, uh, this is more relevant and more important than ever. Uh, their certification is granted by FAO by passing the final scenario based performance evaluation and uh, now associated to uh, the e-learning courses. So uh, it is uh, with, uh, with really great uh, joy and pride um, that I joined this effort of the launch today of the e-learning uh, academy. And it is my pleasure to give the floor now to Cristina Petraki. Cristina, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marcella. And also thank you, Mrs. Bechdel, for, for the excellent introductory remarks. I would like now to just um, talk to you a little bit about uh, the Academy and what we do. First of all, to talk a little bit about the various challenges humanity is confronted with. As you know, food insecurity remains one of the main challenges with uh, a population ever growing. Uh, in fact, it is uh, one of the main challenges to be able to produce not only enough, but the, um, the right quality also of food, uh, respecting the various habits and preferences. Uh, in addition, as you know, food losses and waste are also another challenge uh, to be able to have um, food systems which are sustainable, which are performant, which are integrated, uh, which allow to reduce the losses throughout the food value chains, but also food systems which um, have as a priority the nutritional status and the health and nutritional status of, of citizens. This is what we would really uh, basically um, aim at. Uh, also, climate changes are also, as you know, challenges, uh, natural disaster, extreme weather events, but also the, the governance of tenure and management of natural resources, gender inequalities and discrimination, child labor, youth unemployment, human and animal diseases such as COVID, so all of these are, are, are the various challenges to which humanity is, uh, is confronted with. And the idea is through the FAO eLearning Academy is to try to, uh, first of all, um, support all the SDG framework, the Sustainable Development Goal framework, uh, and especially SDG 4, edu universal education for anyone, anytime, anywhere, for free, as a global public good with really the idea to transfer skills and competences in order to have um, professionals which are competent, able and capable to face uh, all the challenges, uh, formulate the appropriate policies, take the right decide on the right uh, interventions and strategies. Uh, so far, we have reached uh, 600,000 users throughout the world. The platform is now multilingual, as was mentioned uh, before. And I have to mention that this is really the result of a collaborative effort, uh, because this has been uh, possible thanks to the collaboration of over 200 partners worldwide. And uh, actually, the various thematic areas that are covered are the ones that were mentioned before. So, of course, we have uh, courses on the Sustainable Development Goals, on gender discrimination, climate change, uh, sustainable food systems, uh, but also on uh, trade, markets, investments. Uh, we have others on food safety, on responsible investment in agriculture, on agricultural risk management, uh, migration. So the thematic uh, areas are all, all the thematic areas that have um, 
that are needed, uh, in which competences are needed uh, today. So uh, just a few words about our partners. We work with four types of organizations. So we have been working with a number of UN and development agencies, as was mentioned before. All of, all of these agencies are basically using the FAO e-learning courses to develop the capacities of their staff or in their capacity development intervention. So we also have International Federation of Red Cross, uh, UNICEF, UNITAR. The EU is using the uh, FAO e-learning courses in their EU uh, DEFCO Academy. And in fact, we will have uh, later the, the testimonial from, uh, from the EU. Uh, we also work with universities and academic institutions where we create master's degrees and postgraduate degrees uh, in which the, basically uh, which integrate the FAO e-learning courses. Um, and so we have been doing this with uh, one of our valuable partners, the Open University of Catalonia, and we will have their testimonial uh, later on. We also work with Unimet, which is a big network of 116 universities around the Mediterranean region. So we will also have their testimonial. We work with also with NGOs and CSOs. And now we are noticing a lot of interest from private sector, especially on thematic areas such as um, food, sustainable food systems, uh, food safety, but also uh, they're very interested in compliance to the SDGs and to the SDG framework. So um, as I mentioned, we have reached uh, so far 600,000 users and learners throughout the world. And this is just to give you an idea about the geographic distribution. Uh, what is very interesting is to also see basically that 25% of learners are from NGOs, 20% are university professors and students that use our, our resources. But very, very important information is 15% uh, uh, of, of the courses are being used, 15% of our audience is government. So basically, we, uh, governments are using our courses to better steer their policies and their strategies at national level. And this is a very important uh, information. Just uh, to give you uh, some, um, a little bit more details about how we work. So uh, self-based uh, e-learning courses are just one of the eight methodologies that we use. We use different pedagogical models. So as I was mentioning, uh, universe, formal university degrees and masters are also another modality. We also have um, learning programs which are fully mobile, mobile responsive and mobile compatible for uh, when we have a target audience which is in remote areas and who do not have access maybe to computers. We also support a, a number of face-to-face -face interventions with partners and technical divisions. We, do, uh, we also deliver certified uh, online uh, tutored courses. We also have, um, uh, we also develop MOOCs which are massive open online courses. So we also, uh, uh, deliver this as a methodology. We also do uh, certified blended learning programs where we combine different methodologies. So we add wikis, we add blogs, we have country dimensions, regional dimensions. So we do certified blended learning programs for, for regions, for, for at national level, etc. And we also do uh, online technical webinars. We, we are doing a, a number of them with, uh, with some of our partners. So um, I, I mentioned before, as you know, FAO is custodian of 21 of the SDG indicators. And for these indicators, we also have developed uh, specific courses to support countries in the collection, analysis, interpretation, and reporting of these uh, SDG indicators for which FAO is custodian. And these are the, the indicators. These also, these are all the SDG indicators. Um, and uh, so very, very quickly, uh, we are using um, uh, latest adult learning theories and uh, the, our model is basically uh, is based on the ADDIE model. I'm not gonna go into the details, but what I just wanted to mention is what was said also by Marcella. 
for every single uh, learning activity, for every single learning intervention, or for every single um, uh, course, we do a collaborative um, um, and uh, we do a collaborative learning needs assessment with a number of partners, field practitioners, target audiences that are involved to participate in the design of the learning intervention. So we always use a participatory approach and we always use a learner-centered and job-oriented approach to design our interventions. In fact, we go very much into the details of who the target audience is. What are the professional profiles that we are targeting? What are the specific competences that we want to design? What are the roles and responsibilities of our target groups? What are their job tasks? And then for each job task, we try to extract the competences, the skills, the knowledge they need to, to acquire. So everything we do is really target audience based, competency based, but also we look at the main professional profiles that are required. Uh, so, of course, when you, you change thematic areas, the target audiences change completely. So, for example, for the SDG indicators uh, related to, uh, to uh, fisheries, the, the target audiences were, for example, National Fisheries Administration Officer or, or small scale fishing, fishing community member organizations, etc. So, it changes based on the different uh, intervention. But what I wanted to mention is that our methodology is still very consistent and the same and looks into the target audiences, their needs, their activities, and then uh, the, the competences that need to be developed. Uh, to then get, uh, to then design the, the curriculum, which are a combination of concepts, principles, procedures, attitude, but we also consider interpersonal skills and attitudes as part of the curriculum. And uh, this is also, and then we apply different learning strategies based on the different uh, type of content. So, of course, you're not going to use the same learning strategy if you are teaching a procedure. Uh, uh, and if you're, use, if you're teaching a principle, you need to use a completely different learning strategy. So there is all this analysis, which is done by our very talented instructional designers. And uh, very, very quickly, I just also wanted to mention that some of our blended learning programs were conducted, for example, for the entire uh, Association of South, South uh, East um, Asian Nations, for example, for Asian. We have done a number of learning programs for COMESA, for SILS, uh, for ECOWAS, and every time we design the intervention together with our partners, with the countries, and with the target audiences. So this is um, a, a, a huge effort um, uh, and an investment in well targeting the interventions and the courses. This is examples of our platform. I'm not going to go into the details, but this is just to tell you that very often we also foresee uh, uh, post workshops and post courses uh, online mentoring um, uh, phases where basically uh, participants have the possibility to still interact with the, with the tutor and with the other participants to help uh, face the challenges they have in their country. Uh, and so, as I was mentioning, we also use mobile tools and video-based learning, etc. Now, I'd like to conclude uh, with uh, uh, talking to you a little bit about the certification that was mentioned before. So, we have become the FAO eLearning Academy in now in 2020 because we have introduced uh, the the online uh, digital badge certification system. Uh, this is um, worldwide, uh, a worldwide uh, a system that is being uh, used uh, a lot. It allows to better match uh, the competences of professionals to the to the learning uh, to the basically to the employment opportunities. So it's a way to to design your own professional profile by accumulating these badges. Uh, each badge certifies a number of competences acquired, and they are evidence-based. So I will be explaining this a little bit, uh, just to let you know that, for example, private sector is using digital badges, for example, IBM, uh, Dell, Oracle, HP, all of these big companies require their staff to have specific badges on specific competences. So this is really a highly in demand in private sector. But also UN has started, for example, UNICEF have, has developed a series of badges. 
also big uh, NGO, humanitarian NGOs, they are using these um, badges uh, to certify the competences of uh, their staff. And uh, so just to let you know a little bit more, so once, once you earn these badges, they can follow you everywhere in your e-portfolio, in your CV, in your LinkedIn. It really becomes part of your professional prof profile. And they are very um, uh, flexible and uh, they can be uh, accumulated, basically. Uh, so just to um, a little bit more information about how it works, the badge, yes, is a graphical element, but behind uh, it is, uh, there is a database-driven system with uh, the metadata related to the badge. So the badge certifies, it is uh, an authentication data system where uh, the badge certifies the acquisition of specific competences. Uh, you have, uh, of course, in the metadata, the name, the course title, but also the competences acquired. And how can we do this? Because after you do the course, we have designed a, a final uh, scenario-based tests. So um, these are competency-based tests. So basically, the questions that are asked in the test are not, uh, do you remember what was mentioned in the course? But the, the, we, we try to design a scenario with challenges, with a, with a certain situation, and then you are asked, okay, in this situation, what is it that you actually have to do? So there, if you pass the test, you actually demonstrate that you have acquired specific competences. And um, so these are the badges that we have been uh, developing for the uh, FAO eLearning Academy courses. They cover a range of uh, thematic areas that are the ones that were mentioned before. Uh, here, I'd like to mention really the very talented um, graphical artist, which is uh, Benedetta Vanghi, that I, that I uh, thank very much for all of these. These are the ones that we have developed for the SDG indi uh, indicators that I mentioned before. And uh, I would like to conclude by, um, by uh, uh, in telling you about the three publications that the FAO eLearning Academy has. So one is about the achievements of uh, 2019. The other one is on our pedagogical models and learning solutions. So this is the second one. And the third one describes really uh, all the different methodologies that it documents exactly the methodologies that we are using. And we are now about to release the second edition. So from my side, uh, that's it. I would like to, uh, to thank you very much for the attention. And now I would like to give the floor to our uh, partners to hear. So uh, as you know, uh, the FAO e-learning courses have also been uh, used uh, at national uh, level to basically uh, support countries in policy reform and policy formulation processes. And in, in that case, I would like to give the floor to my colleague Francesca Romano from, uh, from FAO that will give, uh, give us, uh, share with us her experiences uh, at national level in policy reform. Francesca, the floor is yours. Uh, you have uh, three to five minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christina. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to so many, so many people connected today. Um, uh, Christina gave me a, quite a challenge task because um, she asked me to um, explain how uh, an e-learning or a learning program can actually bring a concrete impact and, and result at country level in particular with regard to policies um, and legal changes. Um, but uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. Um, my name is Francesca Romano. I'm part of the Land Tenure team in FAO. And, and my team uh, works is in relation to looking into how we can make tenure rights more secure for people. And we work in the framework of the so-called voluntary guidelines on the responsible governance of tenure. This is a, a global instrument adopted by the CFS in 2012. Now, this is a high level tool that when adopted, though is very powerful, is very difficult to translate in actions by people in the ground and in particular by government. Um, but this is actually possible, and it's possible um, because we were able to transform a high-level document with a, a 
a language that was designed for, for policymakers, if you want, to technical guides and then to e-learning and then to learning programs that we did, delivered at country level. There are uh, now 10 e-learning associated to the voluntary guidelines available in multiple languages, including Arabic. And we have uh, three uh, and very soon four learning program associated to the voluntary guidelines. A general one, one on gender, one on uh, responsible investment, and very soon one on pastoralism. Now on the ground, what happened? Let me give you two examples. One from Africa, uh, from Sierra Leone, uh, an extremely poor country, very little resources, uh, a country that faced first a civil war and then Ebola, and now unfortunately COVID as everybody knows, with very limited human resources. Through the uh, use of the e-learning and in particular the learning program on gender and on investment, we have been able to create a very strong and cohesive group of capacitated people. I would like to call them uh, key change agents um, that uh, since the past four to five years are now extremely engaged in the discussion of legal and policy reform in the country. And in particular, with regard to land investment, which is a core aspect of the voluntary guidelines because uh, what we define very often as land grabbing, but more generally as non-responsible land-based investment are um, a concern to many, in particular to the most vulnerable people. Now in Sierra Leone, the learning program that we delivered actually together, uh, bringing together government representative of Sierra Leone and Liberia, we were able actually to, uh, together with government representative, to review what we define as the investment approval process. What is that? Is how a country attracts, implement, and monitor responsible investment. The outcome of this process, which has been quite a long one, I mean, at least we have been working for three years and the process is still working, is going on, sorry. It's a revised process, which is aligned to best practices and it's fully um, owned by the country. And this is a great result, which has also led now to the discussion on a new customary land bill, which again, for those who are familiar with land tenure, you can imagine how important is protecting customary land rights. The, the, let's say, the side effect, if you want, of this learning program, to me at least, is also the capacities of creating a shift in the way people, if you want, behave and interact. Because we bring to, together people from different constituencies as what we call a multi-stakeholder approach. And again, the learning program built around the e-learning that Christina has so well described was absolutely instrumental and crucial. It's very difficult to create a direct link between a tool and the impact. But I can actually say very loud and strong that the role that e-learning e and the learning program and my colleagues, of course, have played in all that was, is evident. Um, and uh, same thing applies to Mongolia. So a completely different setting. Um, again, we're talking about a country where in this case, the pastoralist communities is the one that FAO was trying to support and their rights and their access to uh, resources to land for, for pastoralist activities. There, the impact that we brought through the learning programs and the e-learning was the possibilities of unblocking a process that is, was stuck for several years on the discussion of the pastoral land law, which is crucial and key for the pastoralist community. Now, after so many years, unfortunately, the law has not been adopted yet. And these, of course, tell us always that there, there is a need for a number of different elements to come together 
So capacity development is one of them. Um, political will is another, of course, and, and many others. But certainly, I can say that the, the possibilities of opening a discussion that was locked with the government around a crucial um, aspect for the daily life of millions of people in Mongolia uh, is certainly, in my view at least, um, a concrete outcome of the work that we did through the e-learning and the learning program, in this case, in particular for the pastoralist communities. So I hope that these two elements can actually, um, I mean, show how powerful, um, if accompanied by other mechanisms, um, an e-learning and a learning program can be at a country level. And I thank you very much for, yeah. for listening to my presentation. I hope I made it on time, Christina. Yes, yes, excellent. The, the timing and the, qual the quality. Thank you very thank you. much. I would like to give the floor to my colleague, Michael Riggs, who will be um, talking to us a little bit about how we have supported the responsible uh, investment uh, programs so, uh, in agriculture. So Michael, the floor is yours. You have three to five minutes. Great, Christina. Uh, hello to everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. As Christina said, my name is Michael, Michael Riggs. I work in the team for responsible agricultural investment or the rye team as it's known internally uh, in the partnerships division and i wanted maybe to go back a bit and, and point out to the value of us in working with the e-learning academy and the learning team that's behind it because it allows us we're a relatively small team um, to build on the experiences in a learning sense the experiences of other units within FAO but also of this great constellation of partners that Christina talked about outside of FAO to develop not only our technical content, but also the pedagogy and learning methods behind it. So that basically we can take a team like mine with technical experts and have the opportunity to also have excellent top quality learning programs put together. And this enables us to expand our reach. Uh, once things, our content is published online in the Academy, uh, which we're hearing about today, it enables us to expand our reach way beyond what we would normally be able to do in our team's own direct work on field projects or normative work. And if you look in the eLearning Academy now, you'll find that there are several uh, recently published courses on responsible investments in agriculture and food systems. It's a collection that's new and also growing, uh, coming also from our team, but also many other sources, both inside and outside FAO, and also in various language versions. And the content that you'll see there, if you take a look online, um, is sort of the, the learning cornerstone of my team's work in learning programs. So we constantly go back to this content ourselves to use it in customized programs that are delivered at the country level, both online and face-to-face -face settings. And this content provides, it's, a, it's learning, but more than just learning it, it helps people understand better about some of the top issues that they're working on. And it really gives them the confidence to go forward and seek change in their own settings. So I'd like to highlight a recent experience. We're currently working for about a year and a half now with policymakers uh, in four of the Senegal River Basin countries. These are individuals who come from Guinea, from Mali, Mauritania, and Senegal. And these policymakers are aware of the challenges in managing, but also increasing investments in the agricultural sector. Uh, we need more investments to achieve the SDGs, to ensure food security, but not any old investment will do. Uh, it's not simply a matter of looking through a standardized investment approval process. One of the issues is tenure, which uh, my colleague Francesca just spoke about. But in the context of responsible investment, there are many more issues. There are issues of environmental nature, there are social issues, um, issues of governance, issues of grievance, and so on. And the framework for responsible investment enables people to get a bigger picture and look at what's really important here. So through this training, using the content that you can find in the eLearning Academy, what have we achieved? We've taken these group of policymakers 
who've gotten together twice now over the last year and a half and enabled them to innovate in their responses to challenges in their country. They've created national action plans that include um, new programs. So actually not just an idea, but going beyond the idea and step-by-step -step programs of how they will, are working within their own job context to create more inclusive policy making decisions around investment. Or well, another thing that's been identified by a different country is how to revise incentive, screen, incentive schemes uh, and also incubators to support investments by young angry, agri entrepreneurs. And another area is to look at more efficient but also inclusive investment approval processes. So not just including the government or not just including the government and private sector, but also looking at the communities that are being impacted by these investments to ensure that the positive results of the investments is maximized. So, and we could go on more, there's a lot more detail about what's being learned here and what these countries are accomplishing through this learning program, but I don't have time to explain all of this now. In addition though, what we get back from this work with the academies learning is the learning model that we're using and it's worked so well in the SRB countries we can replicate in the near future in other countries such as Liberia, Sierra Leone, or in Laos in Asia. So not to go on too much longer, I just want to point out that we have learned a lot from this. We have a lot of uh, uh, strategy around the learning programs for RAI and thanks to the eLearning Academy, now you can access the content that we're creating. And if anybody would like to learn more about the work that we actually do in our particular setting, um, for those inside FAO, there will be a capacity development seminar on this later in the year that you can learn from. And then I'll put a link in the chat box for everybody else, both inside and outside FAO. So you can follow up more about these learning programs and what we're doing in the specific context of responsible investment. So thank you for your time. And Christina, back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. I will thank you very much for, for your testimonial. I would like to now uh, give the floor to uh, my colleague Bernd uh, Seifert, with whom we have been working on uh, child labor. Uh, and I would like to ask him to, um, to uh, share with us his experience with, the, with all the work that we have been doing together around the child labor and all the, the, the learning program around it. Bernd, the floor is yours. You have three to five minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Christina. I'm very happy to, to be here today and talk about our rich and very positive experience in, in working together with the e-learning team in FAO. We have um, some years ago started to look into the development of e-learning on the topic uh, of ending child labor in agriculture. And we started off with a curriculum development workshop and we invited a very wide range of agricultural stakeholders from around the world facilitated by Christina's team, we looked into what are the different job profiles to start with, who are we targeting actually, and out of this came a very rich curriculum and uh, we have for a few years now already 10 different um, courses on ending child labor and agriculture where we have an introduction, where we look into how do we engage different stakeholders, what data and knowledge exists and how can we generate it, um, what kind of uh, competencies are needed uh, to influence national policies and to um, achieve policy coherence, how to address uh, child labor in the formulation of agricultural programs, and there are very many different types of these programs, monitoring and evaluation, and also impact assessment of agricultural initiatives on child labor. So particularly interesting for those involved in M&E, communicating effectively on, on child labor and agriculture, building capacity, providing advocacy to address child labor and agriculture is another course. Then also, um, of course, uh, we have uh, one of the courses uh, focusing on business strategies and public-private partnerships. Pesticides management and child labor prevention is very uh, popular and uh, a very popular course and a wide range of, of those uh, uh, actors in agriculture dealing with pesticides um, are very interested in this course. Then we have one on youth employment and reducing child labor in agriculture. There's actually a linkage between youth employment and, and child labor that age group 15, 17 could be in hazardous work, but if we change 
the, the conditions of their work, we can change the child labor situation into one of, of youth employment. So this, these are the different courses, each have a number of lessons. Together, if you want to take it all, it's about 20 hours. So it's very long, but since it is broken down in different uh, courses, um, um, most of our users over the years have, have opted to do the introduction part and then uh, a specialization subject that is aligned with their, um, with their specific job or, or interest. So this was a very, very good experience. We, we worked very close also with the, uh, with the ITC ILO uh, training center in Turin, for example, doing uh, blended uh, learning usually every, every year, where uh, as a precondition to coming to Turin, uh, participants are expected to take certain, uh, certain number of, the, of these courses. Uh, the private sector has very well taken it up. Some are using uh, two of these uh, courses uh, for the supply chain actors in, in global supply chains, the beverage sector, for example. The Rotterdam Convention um, dealing with pesticides has a lot used this course and found it uh, uh, highly valuable that they also um, funded to um, translate it into further languages like uh, Portuguese or Russian, which we otherwise wouldn't have had the, the funding for. All courses are available in English, uh, French, and Spanish, but only some in additional uh, languages. Um, then, of course, ministries of agriculture are, are using it a lot. Um, we have, um, for example, in Cambodia, had the request of, of the Department of Fisheries, part of the, the larger Ministry of Agriculture there, um, the request of, of helping them to set up a certification system for, for their colleagues. And so once they take the course to, to have a certificate, now, finally, I can contact them and say, now it is available. It was, uh, for, in our case, uh, uh, launched last week at the World Day Against Child Labor. Even our FAO Director General was, um, was referring to this, uh, that now we have all these courses available, both in a new format, but uh, uh, even more attractive, I should say, uh, how, how it is been visually presented, but now available with this uh, certification system via badges. So our colleagues, not only in Cambodia, but also other ministries uh, who had asked us precisely this, where can we have certificates if uh, we ask our colleagues and our staff to do it? Some do this voluntary and in other, in other institutions they actually make it uh, compulsory to, uh, to take this course. Um, um, yeah, it, that, that is obviously now um, a, a, great, uh, a great achievement for us as well. So we've used it in so many different contexts, pharma organizations, um, uh, members of the Global Alliance 8.7 that deals with, uh, with ending all child labor, uh, which is the SDG target 8.7. So yes, I, I just uh, must, must uh, congratulate again the e-learning team at FAO for years of excellent collaboration. It was hard work to, to, to develop some of the content that didn't exist anywhere before. So we really had to develop that in, uh, uh, on the way in the exchange with stakeholders and, and it is greatly used and we get a lot of positive feedback. It's a joint FAO ILO e-learning course but targeting, targeting in particular agricultural stakeholders, specific groups of jobs but it's also of interest to the wider, to a much wider in, uh, uh, audience interested in the topic. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. In fact, also many private sectors such as Coca-Cola and others are very interested in being in showing the world that they are, for example, uh, child labor free in their approaches and in their value chains. So uh, this, these type of courses are also um, um, demonstrating to have a great interest also for private sector. I'd like now to give the floor to uh, my colleague Nicole Franz that will briefly tell us uh, about, share with us her experiences related to, um, to small scale fisheries and to the SDG indicators related to, to fisheries. So uh, Nicole, the, the floor is yours. You have three to five minutes. Thank you very much. Uh... Christina and uh, hello to everybody. It's very exciting to be here and thanks a lot for, for having the opportunity to, to talk to you. Um, I'm, I am working in the fisheries and aquaculture department of FAO and I work mostly on small scale fisheries. 
Um, and as you may know, FAO is um, what, what is called custodian agency for some of the SDG indicators. And um, one of, or oh, I think the first e-learning in support of the SDG indicators that FAO produced was actually for indicator 14B1, which is in support of securing sustainable small scale fisheries. So this training, this uh, e-learning was released in 2017, and it's available in, in, in the six official languages. Um, we, we have also adopted a participatory development approach for the development of this training. And the first time we really used it was in an international expert workshop that took place in uh, 2017, where we had, uh, we had participants from 15 different countries attending from, from all parts of the world, spanning yeah, Africa, uh, Latin America, uh, the Pacific, um, Asia. And not only were they coming from, from 15 different countries, but they were also representing different types of stakeholders. So we had representatives from government, we had representatives from regional organizations, but we also had representatives from actually small scale fisher organizations, both those that are actually spending their days in a boat out fishing, but also um, from a women organization, those that are involved in, in terms of, of processing the fish afterwards. And what we did was to actually, in that workshop on SDG 14B, we, we, we divided the participants into small groups, mixed groups huh, with different participants from government, from these regional organizations, from the small scale fisher uh, actor organizations. And, and we asked them, to look at different modules of these different units of the training and to go through it, um, to basically do that, that learning together and to, then to present to the others in the room what they have learned. Um, and that was a really uh, very nice interactive experience uh, also because the different participants were coming in and looking at their training with a different perspective. And, and they all in the end came back to us and said that they found it very useful. And they actually, in this training in 2017, came back to us with some, some comments, with some, some, uh, some suggestions on how to further improve uh, the training. And we took that uh, on board and we refined those, um, those units a little bit more. And we also actually did interviews with the participants, which now are incorporated in this uh, final version. So, so those who were the first to kind of pilot it are now actually part of the, of the training, which I think is also, also quite nice. Um, so this is a really useful training to learn about the methodology for reporting on the SDGs. And um, Marcella mentioned it at the beginning, it's, it's, it's part of our role as FAO to, to develop the capacities of our partners. And, and we see this these trainings, this e-learning, um, as really a tool to enable uh, a better reporting, better awareness about the methods on how to report on the SDGs. We have used this training also, this e-learning, in another regional workshop that took place um, in 2019 in the Pacific. Uh, again, we brought together different, different stakeholders from the fisheries administrations, from the regional organizations relevant for the Pacific and from small scale fish organizations. Um, and this time we also used, again, the e-learning because it's an online tool. You can do it individually at home. That's kind of how it's supposed to be used. But we thought also going over it as a group and see how, how we can use it as a, as a tool even in, in other settings is quite useful. And in that case, we actually asked all participants to do the whole training. So. In a workshop of three days, we, we broke down the learning, the, the, the different units, and we tied them to the workshop agenda. So, so we would start the session with people looking first at the e-learning, or in other cases, we would first have a working session in the workshop, and then have our participants uh, go through the, the e-learning, so that all of them went over that together. And, the, the purpose here was to really have them as, as, as a, give them an, a role as a catalyst because then they had done the training. They had 
experienced it. We had clarified some questions, and because their task you have to come to an end. Nicole. Sorry. <laughs> yes, their task was to go back and and share it then with others. Um, and that's actually also my 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 last point. Just very briefly, also another uh, e-learning that we are finalizing is about a methodology for better data collection for small-scale fisheries. Um, it's not released yet, but stay tuned for it. Um, it, it should come out either end of this year or early next year. Thank you very much and sorry for going over time. Excellent, thank you very much, Nicole. Now we're changing completely uh, the type of testimonials and I would like to give the, uh, to, to hear, we would like to now hear the experiences of our university and academia partners. So I have invited um, Marcello Scalisi from UNIMED, which is the network <laughs> of uh, university is around the Mediterranean area. So Marcello, uh, I, um, the floor is yours. You have three to five minutes to talk about our collaboration. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christina. <laughs> um, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, this week we have this uh, Unimed Week in Brussels, that is in, uh, the fifth edition that we are now organizing uh, online. And we have also invited our members to attend your event including this event as a sort of external webinar of the UNIMED week. Yeah, thank uh, you. <clears throat> and I saw a lot of our colleagues coming from our network. As you said, UNIMED is a network of universities around the Mediterranean region. We have 130 universities from 23 countries in our network, both sides, uh, European and Southern Mediterranean side. Um, obviously, this initiative is very important for us, uh, as you no UNIMED and the FIO have a, uh, an agreement to sign it, sign it last year. Uh, at the beginning of this um, uh, adventure for us, that, that a small organization like UNIMED to work and to cooperate with FAO, we were thinking how to push FAO to, to be active. And we were astonished after, because we discovered that you are too, so active in particular, I don't want to say only the e-learning academy, uh, platform, but all the colleagues, and we are very proud to be to be with you. Uh, we are promoting your initiative. We are collecting several very good feedback from our members. In particular, we have two groups of uh, our uh, members that are very interested about your what you are doing. The first one is the sub network because we have several sub networks in our uh, network. Uh, the first one is on e-learning and open, uh, open educational resources. And we uh, promoted and consulted our colleagues, uh, uh, trying to involve them in the e-learning academy, FIO e-learning academy. And the other one is the sub-network on food and water, that is obviously a definition interested in the, what you are doing. And I have to say that we found a very important inter interest from both sides of Mediterranean, not only Southern Mediterranean, but also the European universities. And this is quite interesting for us. And I hope that in the future we will be able uh, to do something more. For instance, why not to include some of your courses in the uh, curricula of our universities and why not to have uh, also some uh, inter-university cooperation uh, through your activity and so on. The idea for us is to invite our members to open the door to co institutional collaboration and not only to remain in their own academia uh, dimension and partnership. And I think that uh, through the cooperation with you, uh, we could test this opportunity and in some way also we could offer to our well, community a very good service. Thanks, Christina. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marcelo. Now, uh, we have been uh, also designing a number of master's uh, uh, degrees, uh, university master's degrees and specializations with the Open uh, University of Catalonia. And I would like to give the floor with uh, to Javier Medina, uh, who has been been my, my counterpart and uh, with whom we have designed a number of programs to just uh, share with us his experience. Um, Javier, the floor is yours. You have three to five minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christina. Don't worry, I'll, I'll try to be short. I, I know we are almost on the table. So, uh, well, first of all, uh, I have to say thank you and uh, that we are proud, very proud of our collaboration after 11 years. We start 
our collaboration in 2009 with a particular master's, master's degree in English on food uh, society and international food governance. And uh, after that, with the evolution of this master's degree, it was a second one on food security and uh, international food governance. After that, uh, we prepared together with different learning uh, materials from, uh, from the FAO Academy uh, to postgraduate programs on different subjects around uh, food security. In this case, uh, right to food, and on the other hand, uh, food security, advocacy, and, and action. And another three different uh, university certificates all around, always around uh, food security and always using the wonderful um, learning materials from, made, made by my FAO. So um, that part was in English, but we also used, or we're still using your uh, materials uh, in Spanish in uh, our master's degree in uh, nutrition and uh, health. So uh, we are very happy to, to, to our collaboration that side because your materials, your, all your, your educational preparation is, uh, is wonderful and very useful from our perspective. Finally, um, I can particularly remember a couple of international projects training uh, particularly some FAO people working in different, uh, different parts of the world. One of them was a particularly interesting one, uh, training uh, some people uh, mainly working for FAO uh, in the South uh, Eastern Europe in different countries from Albania to Azerbaijan. And uh, another one particularly, particularly interesting in specifically for, for, uh, for an, in Ethiopia. So um, after that, uh, unfortunately our master degree in food security and international food governance and last years after, after 10 years of beautiful collaboration, but we are proud to say also that uh, we are thinking about new possibilities of, uh, of new collaboration in, in a short future. So thank you very much, Christina, and that's all from Barcelona. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Javier. Now I'm, I'm giving the floor to uh, Sara Roversi, who is the founder of Future Food Institute. With the Future Food Institute, we have done many, many uh, very interesting interventions. We have done last year um, uh, a hackathon, an international hackathon on the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, this year we have done a, a, a huge digital 24-hour global marathon on sustainability and uh, uh, we also are um, designing and developing joint uh, international boot camps. So, uh, Sara Rovesi, the floor is yours. You have three to five minutes. Thank you. Where is she? Sara? Sara, could you unmute yourself, please? You have to unmute yourself. Because uh, the, the, the contact is not very stable, so I, I was also with the co-phone. I don't think it's gonna work, but anyway. So, yes, thank you so much for having us with you today. Thank you so much, Christina, and it's a pleasure to be with the FAO family. So, since we started our collaboration, actually, we really tried to create a very, let's say, unconventional experience of learning. Our program, we started last year, our program were really focused on creating intergenerational uh, pathway, really to combine people that come from different backgrounds, but also coming from different ages, working a lot with young innovators, startuppers, students, but also policy 
policymakers uh, and decision makers. So together we organized the boot camps last year, but also hackathons. Uh, now this year, a digital boot camp and a 24 hour marathon uh, combining together 100 speakers and trying to create the longest lesson on feeding the planet on Earth Day. So together with FAO, we really try to combine uh, all the incredible value that uh, the learning platform is offering to everyone, everywhere, accessible in each uh, kind of part of the world, but also combining this with uh, very experiential uh, trainings on the ground. This summer, we are about to launch uh, our first uh, digital bootcamp that is going to start at the beginning of July. But from September, we're going to start again also our physical bootcamp, let's hope. And uh, we actually targeted 10 different countries uh, with four main topics. Uh, so training uh, uh, change makers uh, on how we can tackle the challenges uh, that we are facing, uh, being very focused on uh, those four chapters. So design designing innovation for resilient communities that are living on the oceans, uh, on the coastals, then uh, talking about uh, rural areas uh, and farmers. Then we're talking about citizens in smart cities, in the cities of the future that needs to be able to manage all the issues related to food access to food, the food waste. But say, this is gonna be for sure something really connected to the fourth topic that is uh, connected to the kitchen. And actually today is the World Day of Sustainable Gastronomy. So I think that this is truly really really connected actually <laughs> to this topic. And so the fourth topic is training innovators on designing a climate smart kitchen experience. Uh, and so this is how we work with FAO, really trying to test uh, new ways of uh, creating uh, innovational pathway, bringing innovators together from all around the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah. I have to mention that we're the the global 24-hour uh, marathon, uh, in the 24 hours, we managed to gather 100,000 people about, uh, to listen about sustainability. So that was actually quite an achievement uh, uh, to, to be able to gather 100,000 people from all over the world to listen and to hear about the experiences uh, related to sustainability. I would like now to give the floor to uh, our partner Danone. So we have worked also with Danone, uh, the, the private company. So um, we have worked with many private companies uh, where uh, the courses were in, uh, incorporated uh, in, in their learning platform for their staff, but also in their processes, to change their processes. So I would like to give the floor to Alice durand -Revi from Danone uh, because we have also worked with them. So Alice, the floor is yours. You have three to five minutes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christina. Can you hear me well? Yes, yes. yes. Wonderful. So it's absolutely great to, to be here today and hear about all those exciting news and exciting perspective. As you mentioned, we were one of the private companies that are really uh, very interested from the beginning on these, this e-learning platforms and I just wanted to share a little what is uh, the private sector interest to, to enter those, those lessons and these processes. Um, just a, a, a very general statement uh, to, uh, to start with, which is that we really think that access to knowledge and capacity building are the backbone of every progress everywhere. It sounds a little um, general, but uh, in those very, difficult times that uh, we, all, um, uh, we all go through, it's important also to, to remind how uh, knowledge is important. It's the key to solidarity, to independence, to adaptation, to resilience and fulfillment. And it's also the only way that we will find collectively to tackle the, the pressing challenge of climate change and biodiversity loss. It's really a moment where we all must come together and align on knowledge and science. So it's super important. Danone, just a few words to in introduce Danone. Danone is a food, serve, uh, a food company that is serving 800 million consumers worldwide. And uh, in 120 countries, we are mostly, um, uh, our business is mostly in dairy and plant-based protein, which means that we are really very connected to agriculture and agricultural processes. 
but Danone is also uh, the, the biggest uh, purpose-driven company, is a strange and new con uh, um, concept that is also co called Entreprise à Mission in France and Public Benefit Corporation in the US. Why is it important? Because it imports, to, it means that all our employees worldwide, our 100,000 employees are really uh, motivated and join us and join Danone because of this kind of mission we have uh, given ourselves, which is One Planet, One Health, and really working as much to deliver profit, but also to deliver this mission, which is uh, to, to really uh, bring, bring benefit to the planet and to the people. And all the way we, we do our job is also to bring this double profit. To, to everyone, but it's very difficult to feel empowered if you don't understand what you're talking about. It's very difficult to get engaged and, and to, to go in a company if you don't understand what your con concrete contribution to very complex topics can be. It's very difficult to, to, to understand and act on, on very, very complex concepts like sustainable food systems or SDGs. So if you don't access the knowledge you need in the language which is uh, yours, adapted to your geography, uh, adapted to your level of ed education, you cannot act and then you cannot uh, act as a citizen but also as a Danone employee. To embark our employees in this very long journey toward sustainable food systems, we needed a strong, a scientific, a global partner to develop more accessible knowledge for all. We needed to turn very complex concepts into practical knowledge and knowledge into actions. This is why Danone was so happy, and myself also, so happy and proud to partner with FAO and benefit from the early stages uh, of the e-learning academy. In 2019, Danone employees spent 27 hours in average on training, and a large part of these trainings are e-learnings. We integrated some of the FIO models into Danone's online training platform and encouraged all our employees to register and to attend to the models. We appreciated the great diversity of approaches, and I will come back on this in a minute, which is, it, uh, it's true that there was a lot of different topics, some which were quite familiar to us and some that are most mm -hmm. difficult for us to approach like child labor. So what was really interesting for us also is not only to have uh, some topics that are directly linked to business, but also some very important um, uh, modules that were linked to our core values. So this was very helpful. Uh, we also ap appreciated uh, the, the great diversity of formats because all our employees cannot uh, take two or three or four hours um, in one program. So there are some programs that were half an hour and others that were two hours and others that were four hours. And this was really important because there was a very big range of uh, knowledge level from very broad uh, concepts to very technical trainings. And this was also something very important uh, for us. Um, today, we are really happy to welcome this new format of the Academy. We especially um, welcome with a lot of appreciation, appreciation the much better user exp experience, the, the, the really improvement in the user experience. I saw that uh, your trainings uh, were uh, available also on a format on uh, um, cell phones, Telephone, uh, uh, on different uh, digital pl platforms, and this will be really much easier for us and our employees to, to connect with. I also saw that, uh, and, and it was uh, very much uh, said before me, uh, there's a lot of different formats from MOOCs uh, to online courses to hackathons, and this is also something that is very suitable to our very flexible and adaptable uh, employees. And okay. uh, we Excellent. also welcome with uh, very much uh, appreciation the digital badges or e-certificate. 
it is true that when our employees uh, go on trainings, they always appreciate to have uh, to be able to put them in the career path or have something that uh, will really deliver value and be transmissible to to their uh, the company. So this is also a very very good um, evolution uh, from the the platform before. So. We welcome and we will, of course, be, be very happy to go on uh, cooperating with this platform, especially on courses like sustainable food systems, which are uh, very, uh, very important for us, but also regenerative agriculture and also um, uh, sustainable agricultural practices. So Excellent. thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, we really look for uh, working with you uh, on longer terms. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Alice. And I would like now to give the floor to Alejandra Rivas, who works with the uh, uh, European Union DEFCO Academy. Uh, we are working with the Academy. We actually share with them many of our courses and we also share with them our international webinars. So uh, Alejandra, the floor is yours. You have three to five minutes, thank you. Thank you, Christina, and thank you everyone. Uh, I wonder if you see my screen because now I'm sharing my screen. Yes. So yes, actually here uh, you see the DEFCO Academy. Uh, we are from the European Commission and this is a public learning platform openly for the entire development community. It provides free access to a set of e-learning course, documentation and podcasts. And developed by the European Commission, DigiDefco, and in close cooperation with our partners, specifically the FAO, with whom we have an excellent collaboration, and most of the e-learning courses uh, come from the FAO e-learning academy. Examples like the SDG indicators courses, introduction to climate smart agriculture. So, we actually share the same approach, which is the approach to learning and offer free and open self-paced online learning resources to all citizens. So as the DEFCO Academy is a platform uh, for the development community, we promote, I uh, will go to topics, uh, we promote topics such as agriculture, food security, nutrition, fragility, and this is where we have so within these topics is where we have integrated the, e, the resources, the e-learning courses coming from the FAO. As you have, you can see here, the list is quite big. So I can say that we have about 60, 80 e-learning courses coming from you, from the FAO e-learning academy that we host on the DEFCO Academy. And also our platform is multilingual, multilingual. So we have courses in English, French, Spanish, and even in Portuguese. Uh, so with, with this, I, I, I can say that we rely on the FAO as our partner because you are committed, committed to promote it online learning and you understand the value of shared knowledge and in making sure that no one is left behind. So, but our close collaboration is not only about uh, e-learning courses, I uh, mentioned webinars, so I will come here to our learning methods. Um, from long time already, the European Commission and the FAO have been working together in the production of a series of webinars, and we have grouped them under the topic fragility, for example, in this case. So you can see that there are uh, webinars produced from 2017, then 18, 19, and so on. The list is also quite big, as you can see here. All of these resources in the, on the DEFCO Academy, they are free of charge. The users, can, the users, they only need to click on one of the, the titles and they will, they will go to the page Enroll Me and they will go directly to, to the page, to the course page of their webinar page. So here we mention everything about the collaboration between FAO and, and the EC. But this is not only about hosting e-learning courses or hosting the webinars coming from the FAO. We also collaborate 
or let's say that we, we support the FAO with promoting upcoming webinars. And I say this because actually you are working on right now in the production of a series of, of international technical webinars uh, together with um, the partners, uh, your partners Agrinion and UNSCAP. And we also promote and help with the promotion of the webinars by our different communication channels like the DEFCO Academy newsletter. And here in, uh, in the section of coming events, you can see that we offer the link to your registration and also to, to the, uh, we give the opportunity to the users to download the invitation. So I will need to say thank you so much for this great collaboration. We support you, you support us with sharing all of these e-learning courses, e-learning re resources that we can offer for free to everyone. So you are you. doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alejandra. This is, was really excellent. Thank you. Thank you all. Actually, I would like to just answer a few questions that I've received meanwhile during the event. So uh, many people are asking uh, where can they find the courses? Uh, so it's very easy. It's elearning.fao.org. Uh, it is the link. I am actually ask, asking Fabio to, to uh, add the, the screen with the um, with the link. So this is the link of the eLearning Academy. It's elearning.fao.org. And many of you were asking how to see the competences related to the, to the badges. Uh, so after the courses, you have the possibility to doing the test. The tests are final scenario-based competency-based test. And if you pass the test and you have a score of over 75%, you get the digital badge. Uh, if you click on the badge, you then can see all the metadata and all the specific competences that you have acquired. So this is how it works. And uh, so I would like to, uh, before giving uh, the, um, the floor to uh, the head of the Capacity Development Unit, uh, Don Jin Fang, I would like to thank you all very much. Thank you to all the participants who stayed till the end. Thank you to all the partners who joined us with their testimonials. Many, many, uh, we have worked with many other partners, but uh, we, we selected these ones just to share their, their, their testimonials. I would like to also thank those who have made these webinar possible, Fabio Piccinic, uh, Aristide Bucare, and Sara, uh, Sara Ferrante from my team, all the FAO eLearning Academy team who is really uh, 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 about 30 very, very talented instructional designers and graphic designers. And I would like to give the floor to uh, Mrs. Donjin Fang for the concluding remarks. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Christina. So good morning, good, e uh, good afternoon, good evening to everybody. I do believe that uh, we fully achieved the overall objective of the events today. So through launching of the FAO eLearning Academy, we discussed the role and the impact of uh, the e-learning courses developed by FAO in close collaboration with the numbers of uh, uh, internal and external partners, showcasing FAO's uh, partnerships with uh, multi-stakeholders and FAO's contribution to uh, capacity development of the members and uh, partners worldwide. Most importantly, I believe that the event today provided us a very nice opportunity for us to update the advances and the achievements made in the area of uh, e-education, e-learning, uh, and so on. So that's really important for us. And uh, as just as we discussed, in fact, with the current uh, situation of the COVID-19, it has uh, necessitated a uh, 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 a move from traditional learning to e-learning. So in fact, there continues to be new and novel ways for us to uh, make the e-learning more effective uh, in the future. Uh, I mean, if you compare with the uh, traditional learning. So uh, just as mentioned by our DDD, Beth, our director, um, uh, Marcella, and my colleague, uh, Christina, in fact, the FAO eLearning Academy is, uh, uh, is, uh, is the, uh, um, the result of a very collaborative uh, uh, collaboration with more than uh, 200 uh, partners. 
So in this sense, and based on our discussion today, uh, let's uh, uh, strengthen and uh, deepen our collaboration further. And uh, let's uh, work closely even more than ever to share information, to uh, uh, share uh, knowledge and resources, and uh, to uh, develop uh, capacities to innovate uh, more solutions, approaches, and uh, uh, technologies so as to achieve the SDGs and the 2030 agenda. So last but not least, let me end my closing by thanking, uh, first of all, our DDG Bess and our director Marcella. Thank you for your time to, uh, to, to stay with us and your continued support to our work in, in particular in the work of uh, uh, e-learning uh, academy development is very much appreciated. And of course, a big thanks need to go to our distinguished panelists. Thank you so much for your great uh, uh, contribution to the outcome of the event today. Of course, we need to thank all the participants, just as mentioned by Christina. Uh, in, to thank you so much for your active uh, participation. In fact, I know that uh, uh, many of the, part, uh, the participants are our partners, either internal or external partners. So I would like to, at the end of my, at the end, at the end of my talk, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all so much for your great contribution and cooperation in the past years in terms of the development of FAO e-learning course and the FAO uh, academy development. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody.